what causes anxiety for a new mom? Everything, but it's gonna be okay. This picture is my family and for the purposes of the talk, my baby. I promise that this is not all just a ruse to show lots and lots of baby pictures, but that is something that does slowly take over as a new mom before you even realize that it's happening. A little bit about me, I am an elementary special education teacher. I love going to um, advocacy events for my school district. I love traveling to nerdy conventions. I'm currently completing my master's in elementary education. Um, so I'm very excited, very passionate about the things I do and highly organized. Um, but babies don't do organized. And some of the anxieties as a new mom when you're a type A start at the very beginning. I will never forget what I told my husband when I said we're pregnant. I said, I am so excited and I'm so terrified. And he said, honey, it's gonna be amazing. And we were both right. The thing is, when you are pregnant and you're someone who loves to research and study, there are so many resources out there. The problem is some of those resources will tell you, get lots and lots of rest. Make sure you still exercise, drink lots of water, but not too much and cravings. People will tell you, oh, follow your cravings. Your body knows what it needs, but put down that hot Cheeto. You put it down right now. And you know what? Whether it's Brussels sprouts or ice cream or the occasional hot Cheeto, Cravings aren't terrible, but you do feel guilt sometimes. And as I mentioned, I have a special education background, so my brain at work is always on milestones. And that was one of my biggest focuses as a new mom. And I worried about the side I was sleeping on, if I was fastening my seatbelt too tight, if I was using my pillow correctly, just to make sure that my baby was gonna be okay. Spoiler alert, my baby is fine. But you worry about all of those things and you plan. Some of the planning is really fun and really exciting. We didn't know if we were having a boy or a girl, so we decided to go with a space theme for our nursery because it was gender neutral. Even in that fun planning though, you wonder, is the crib safe? Is the changing table safe? Is there a manual to read about the baby glider? What about the books? What if they eat the books? Spoiler, sometimes babies eat books. Speaking of books, as I mentioned, I was reading lots of books. I was also going to childbirth classes and breastfeeding classes and infant CPR classes, and I had binders and I had a plan for childbirth. My plan involved three things. I wasn't gonna be induced, I wasn't gonna have an epidural, and I wasn't gonna have a C-section. <laughs> None of that happened, none of it. I went into labor on a Tuesday, didn't get induced until a Friday, uh, was begging for an epidural in the wee wee hours of Saturday morning, and when it came time to bring my baby girl into the world, the doctor said, hey, her heart rate's dropping, we're gonna have to have a C-section. And that's what we did. Everything I planned and studied and tested for fell apart except for having a healthy baby. And that was something that I had to remind myself is of course the most important thing. Um, but then once the baby's there, what do you do with a baby? Good news, I did lots of reading. But one of the things you have to do is feed the baby. Part of my once baby is here plan involved breastfeeding. That was my choice. My baby had a tongue tie though, so that meant two days after we left the hospital, she had to have her little tongue clipped. She had latching issues, so that meant seeing a lactation consultant. And despite what the classes and the books tell you or anybody saying, oh, it's natural, it might be natural, but it's hard work and it is exhausting. Now, some of the things about being a new mom are very, very rational to worry about, like SIDS. SIDS is something very scary. If you read too much about SIDS though, you end up, even when you're already exhausted, waking up every 20 minutes just to make sure that your baby is still breathing. That's not rational. Remember my breastfeeding plan? It went beautifully for six weeks. And then we found out my baby had a protein allergy and we had to switch to formula anyway. As much as I told myself, even before having my baby, that fed is best, I felt again like my plans were falling apart. One of the things that helped me as a planner is there are lots of really cool baby tracking apps out there, and this is a gorgeous chart of my baby. It's when she eats and sleeps and poops, and you want to keep track of when your baby's poop. That's a good thing to keep track of. But it's not the whole picture. This, this is the whole picture. This is my daughter standing up for the second time ever. I didn't have my phone out for the first. And as you can see, she's just about as surprised as I am. There's nothing in a binder or a chart that can show you that moment. Now this slide, I would love to get philosophical and talk to you about all the scary what ifs of a new mom, but I'm going to level with you. This slide fell victim to mom brain. It's a real phenomenon. I thought I would conquer it and have no problems, but I forgot what I was doing. 
The important thing is though, doesn't matter what your plan is, doesn't matter how much it falls apart, life is gonna go on. Studying will still happen, time with family will still happen. If you have hobbies like running like I do, that can still happen and it's gonna be okay. Because no matter how scary being a new parent is, no matter how much you plan, this is what matters. The moments with your baby. It doesn't matter if he or she is meeting their milestones as long as they are healthy and loved. And that's life as a new mom.